Hello, world. Welcome. We're in the queue from the Verge office, recording live, uh, following up with our release of Michelle Obama 360. Uh, I'm assuming most of you guys are watching because you had a chance to watch the video. And if you haven't, then you should certainly go to youtube.com forward slash The Verge and check it out because it's, incre it's incredible. It's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's insane. Insane. It's, it's, it's pretty great. Pretty great. It's fun. We're all very happy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I'm Trey Shalahorn, executive like producer for the Verge video team. Uh, I am here with Mariel Nelson, director, Verge Hello. video, Tom Connors, senior director, mastermind behind, mastermind behind this project, and James Barham. James Barham, art director, uh, also photographer who took these stunning portraits of the lovely Michelle Obama. So we're, we're you know, we're going to kind of keep this short and simple. And we really want to target uh, a lot of questions revolving uh, post-production. How do we pull this off? Um, a lot of our colleagues have been curious about this. A lot of my friends have been texting me since the release of this have been curious about this. And so this is an opportunity for us to sort of, you know, step behind the scenes and, and share with you guys um, what happened. So I think we should just jump into background. How, how do we conceive of this idea? How do we conceptualize this idea? Yeah, well, yeah, the, we all we found out we were going to do this at CES uh, this year, which was a terrible time to find out of it. But uh, <laughs> we threw the idea out there, and uh, the White House was very receptive to the idea of us doing this in 360. So we got partnered with a, a John and uh, some other producers to actually make this in 360, uh, capturing it. And then that was kind of the easy part, honestly. <laughs> Shooting in 360 is not actually that difficult. You set the camera down and you turn it on and it goes. And it, it worked. Um, and then the post-production side of things was when it, you know we, we really took our time trying to like craft our story and figure out all the sort of creative avenues we wanted to do because 360 is a very new type of medium for us to kind right. of live in. And using it, uh, at least for me in the past, I've always had a a lot of trouble with 360 content because it is so far away from the person. Right. I feel like you lose the chance mm -hmm. to actually engage. Like I'm very close to Trey and James and Miriam right now and I can see their face and I can see their expression and I understand exactly what's going on with them. But a lot of times in 360 you're seven, six feet away from the camera right. and you're very, very small and you don't get that. Um, so a big design thing that we wanted to, to figure out with this piece is how do we inject that into a 360 interview in a way that feels natural and seamless and doesn't take you out of it. Um, but when it does, it is informative and growing the piece. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to also state for the record that this is The Verge and Box Media's first uh, 360 project. So it was a it was, really ambitious first start. very <laughs> ambitious <laughs> launch not. to do 360 when we have such a high profile uh, subject. Yeah. I believe, with, right? I believe I was, I've been paying, I've been trying, we've been trying to do some sort of 360 content for a really long time now. And I think the first thing I said talking about it was let's not do it on anything really important so we can learn <laughs> on, a, on an easy That's thing. So. And we didn't do that. And they were, no. yeah, they were talking to the White House and they were like, oh, let's do it in, let's do it in 360. Yeah. But, uh, Came to I, I mean, the, the, whole, the whole thing about this is like you said, you can't move the camera and, uh, and it all happened so fast. And it's yes. the White House. And you've got to get that entire crew in there. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, the, it has to be said that the White House were incredible. Mm -hmm. yeah. So supportive, so easy to work for. And, you know, from the photo shoot side, what we were thinking about is how, OK, it's not enough just to go and stick a 360 camera there. We've got to take pictures. There's got to be a story about it. And so I think from when we were working it out, we came up with the, uh, the selfie idea. We did some tests. Um, the White House loved it. And we went off to do it. But the thing that was so important is we had to do this for real. We had to take that orange background to the White House. We right. had to set it up. We had to get that real, um, her real team there and to sort of show the right. background because otherwise it would have looked like we shot it in a studio. Right. So from a design standpoint, why, why the orange? The verge orange, right? I mean, <laughs> and it's just you know, it's a lovely color. It's it's uh, it's warm. It's bright. It's right. crisp. And the the other thing was, you know, it's this is an opportunity to photograph Michelle Obama, the first lady, in a way that's never been done before. We didn't want this to look like a good housekeeping cover 
or something else. This had to be for us. We had to own it. Right. And what better way to own it is to embed the color of the verge in the very pictures. They're not going to work anywhere else. So right. that's what was so important, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, I mean, you can see it, it makes her truly pop out, right? Like a warm summer day, <laughs> but it wasn't. It was January and it was freezing. <laughs> it was very and I, if everybody remembers, <laughs> spent fifty minutes outside of the main security while I was uh, had a little bit of an instant getting into the White House. But they let me in and they were very nice. Yeah. And he, thank you very much. James was just too charming to <laughs> not let in. So, <laughs> so yeah. So you know, we we came up with this idea of shooting it in three sixty. We we came up with the idea of uh you know bringing in our our verge orange into the white house and kind of creating this really cool hip look right um so take me through some of some sort of ideas uh first i guess let's talk about video uh th you know 360 with motion graphics and animation sounds pretty crazy right i imagine that the process of you know how how do you take the 360 space and incorporate yeah. graphics and so they're not super you know uh <laughs> jarring or you know uh really wacky how how you know how did you maintain this consistency and look and and, and flow right so and animation i think the main sort of idea that i always kind of came up with and i i'll i'll throw credit where credit is due to our uh, past alum, uh, Phil Rabibero, who made a series for us called The Big Future, where uh, we had interviewed Bill Gates in a regular interview, and he took that interview footage mixed with a little bit of a VO script and made these really beautiful motion graphics that helped take a, a standard interview and, t and expand it out into this big sort of infographic uh, explainer video on a subject with an interviewer. Uh, and it was really great and it was really inspiring to this piece which was, okay, can we take that? Can we take that feel and incorporate that into a 360 space? Taking away sort of that, oh, you're just in one room and there's only one thing to look at and you get bored after you've kind of looked around for a little bit. Here we've injected things for you to look at as much as it makes sense. Right. Um, and actually, so talking about process for doing it, uh, I'm gonna sift that over Miriam a little bit because she was the in, in, integral in figuring out all the technical things of this. Yeah. Um, and yeah, let's bring up After Effects and just kind of look at this for a second. So get you an idea of kind of the scale of it. Our main comp has 129 layers all moving around at once. So forgive my tiny little laptop if it is creaking along trying to keep <laughs> up. Uh, so what our main like workout workhorse when we did this was this software called Metal which allows you to take 2D animations and bring them into the 360 space. Uh, so if you look at this little phone on the side up here, uh, if I take off the metal programming, it turns it, it's hard to see because the screen's so small, but it turns it all flat and it will look very strange in the preview player. It was on the right time code at all. Um, Let's, can we back up real yeah, fast? Go for it. Can you explain how this, the idea of what a, uh, something called an ecto-rectangular view is? For sure. Okay, so the easiest way to think about ecto-rectangular projection is kind of like the classic world map you see, where it's got like Greenland super massive in the top and uh, kind of all the other countries kind of normal spaced along the equator. Uh, because what it does is it takes a globe, which is a sphere, and kind of peels apart the the top of the globe and makes it really wide. So if you look at like this image of the room we have here, uh, you can see the chandelier is massive uh, and all of the production equipment on the bottom is stretched out huge. But then Whereas you, if you look at the interview, like it's pretty close to being... Right. When you go in here, you can... Uh, it's so slow. If you go in here, you can look down and see that it's all right in this little clump. And this is a, this is a metal thing that's using cameras in After Effects to sort of create an approximation of how that will look once it's all stitched together. So the idea is you take that flat image and software that ever you upload it to YouTube, Facebook, hopefully you can uh, <laughs> get that, send that up to them. They will take that and they take that square and then wrap it into a circle through programming. And that's what allows exactly. you to spin around later. Yeah, and so Metal kind of workhorses it and takes 2D objects that you put in that are normally in 
regular flat and transforms them and warps them so that they have this curve, which when you put them into 360 view, come on computer, you can do it. <laughs> I believe in you. You can then turn around and see them. And I think that was, to me, that was like a really surprising thing that it actually, you know, I think going into this, we had anticipated, oh man, we are going to be editing in 360. This is going to be a much more complicated process. But really, it was pretty much the same as editing a 2D process. Yeah. You're still editing in a rectangle. It's a two to one ratio instead of a, you know, 16 9 that we're used to. Mm -hmm. But everything else was the same. We animate on there and it, it trans and metal and how you do wipes just translates to a 360. So you start to sort of be able to look at that uh, ecto rectangular stretch out thing and kind of see how it makes sense in 360 in animating in 360. Um, so it was actually like super fun to put in all these graphics and get to see them in there, and then realize that like it wasn't actually that difficult to do. No, I mean because you're basically still editing the same way. It's right. just uh, you have to be a little bit more conscious about cuts and whatnot because this right. can feel super jarring. Yeah. So that that's so it. at any point did you need to edit with the headset? Was that experience no. like, or can you edit with the headset, or is it does it all happen in two D? Uh, there are uh, the easiest way to edit is in 2D for sure. Um, there are there are a couple plugins that give you headsets, but not for After Effects, right? We haven't found no, one. I, not that we have that runs. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so uh, in the in the future, I I, I can't wait to edit in VR. Editing in VR is going to be the best. If you give me a keyboard that can strap to my chair and a mouse that I can just wirelessly turn, I'll edit for days. It'll be great. But the funny thing, <laughs> the, the whole thing with this video is once you put on a headset, it completely makes sense. Right. I mean, when we got into the VR room and put this headset on, I mean, apart from tying, tying myself in complete knots with the cable of the headset, because it kept spinning around all the time, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, and that's like part of the design that we talked about um, when we were coming up with the idea for these animations and what they would look like. That was something we talked about. It was like, how does the design of these push you in certain directions, right? Because part of 360 is you want to give people the ability to look anywhere they want and follow their interests Absolutely. in any way and give them things, reward them for looking, reward them for checking things out, right? Even the setup of how we set the shot, you know, we, we chose not, we wanted to have cameras there to do those cutaways, but we also wanted interesting things. So if you watch the video, I want a slider bouncing back and forth the entire time. The entire time. <laughs> and we used that shot once in the piece, and we, I wasn't like super into the shot, but it gives some action to that background, right? And like staging that out is part of how we conceptualize this whole thing, right? You wanted to be able to look at, because we very easily could have taken us out of that room entirely and left right. you in an empty room. Actually, Miriam, do you want to explain the crazy cheat we figured out oh, for yeah. this? So because cutting is so jarring, and we obviously this interview is about what, 20 minutes long? 20, yeah, it was about or, a 20 minute interview that we cut down to 10. To 10 minutes. So there are some cuts, and we've hidden them in a bunch of different ways. But the easiest way we did to hide it was we took just a straight 10 minutes of the background of all of us crew hanging out and ended up masking, um, masking it out so that the background never cuts at all. Uh, we have, let's see if we can get it to show up. Uh, more sound effects, please. <laughs> <laughs> Load computer, you can do it. I believe in you. Actually, while this loads, this might be a good time. Uh, speaking of sound effects, to bring in our yes, our sound guy. Come on over. Uh, I'm going to actually hop out and let him sit here. Yeah. All right. I can come back James, if you want. You. But if you don't want, if anyone, to, if anyone, anyone has, come back. if anyone has any questions about the photography for this entire production, please start dropping them in and. Uh, once we get to the question and answer part of this at the end, we'll bring James back, and he'll be very happy to answer all of them. Uh, so Miriam, yeah, show okay. us what's happening here. So I've got a pretty standard thing in After Effects where I have duplicates of the main video layer. Um, but one of them has this great mask on it, which I turn it on. You can no longer see the First Lady and Eli and Caroline Adler because we've masked out a video of just the background and all of us for the 10 minute long uh, of the video. But then behind that, I have their video with the appropriate cuts. And so we've found a way to hide those cuts within that tiny sphere, but we didn't have to worry about hiding all the cuts of right. us. Because when you cut everything around you, it's a very disorient it's it becomes very disorienting. Tom jumps like 10 I, minutes. Yeah, especially me because I'm jumping. Um, but like this was a way for us to draw your attention away from the center of the screen where we could cut that. Um, 
And then the next stage for that, fig so figuring out, okay, how do we cut without wiping to a full graphic? Because if we wipe to a full graphic the entire time, it would get impossible Nothing to watch. Um, so the idea was, how do we keep you in this room but do that? And um, our first thought was like, oh, well, we'll just blur out the background and make the graphics feel like they're a little bit closer. Actually, before we get into this, let's actually introduce Andrew, <laughs> who's been sitting here quietly. Andrew Marino, ladies and gentlemen, sound designer extraordinaire. Yeah. And, and sound recordist. And yes. sound recordist. Yes. You You'll see him in the video. Yeah, yeah. I'm in that. He's got like a right, frame. Right, right, right side of the frame, holding the bag. Yeah. The <laughs> there, there he is. is. Oh, no. No, that's cute. <laughs> so Andrew, we have your attention. Uh, tell us a little bit about what was the motivation behind the sound design? Um, well, the motivation was the animations. Obviously, um, uh, you kind of get the sort of feel of where, what you want to sound like by the kind of feel of the animation. So there's like it's it's like a little cartoony, but not overly so. You know, where it's not um, silly. I didn't want to make it silly, and also this is like virtual reality so it's like sci-fi kind of i wanted to get a lot of sciencey noises in there um yeah yeah and i think now is it true because there's a rumor going around <laughs> that you you recorded some live sounds yeah there's and, a few and, and use them throughout the piece yeah there's a few live sounds we i couldn't i it compiled a bunch of library sounds that we already had but stuff that i couldn't uh, find online or in our sound library, I had to replicate um, one of them being the tire in the video when it goes mm -hmm. all around your head. Um, I We were looking for a tire we, mm -hmm. in the office and there was like a hand truck we had to use. Which, But um, yeah, we also have Miriam. There's a little like Easter egg. Miriam makes a little sound effect noise. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> so if you can, you can hear it around there. It's in the beginning. There's one in the beginning. Yeah, so I think you can point it, find it if you tried it hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a it, especially we got to, we got we got the chance to view this in uh, the Vive headset. Yeah. A lot, and it was a great it was a great experience. And when you put uh, headphones on and have those sound effects, it's really fully immersive and it really, really makes it right, yeah, I come together. Really recommend listening to it on headphones. Um, it's <laughs> it's a plea from an audio <laughs> 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 Don't watch it on mute like this. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay, so Miriam, let's get oh. sorry, let's get back to this. Can I just say like I'm learning this as <laughs> like as these people are like I didn't know that was how you did that. Yeah. That was that's a really cool idea. Yeah. Um so yeah so uh Let's let's talk about so this so we've basically taken this ecto rectangular version, we've removed them, and now we have graphics coming up, taking over. But what we what we kind of figured out is if you put a solid color up in 360, you're just looking at blankness. Like there's no there's no sense of space. There's no sense of like uh, depth that you get when you have the footage of the room. So a lot of the things we were playing with was gradients and putting stuff over top of that. Um, but obviously, if you put a gradient over top of that, you're not doing yourself a favor with hiding a cut. So right. how did we do that then? Well, I mean, for a lot of ways, uh, we kind of blurred them out behind the graphics. But there's a nice mathematical theory out there called the hairball theory, that if you blur out the background, the way you blur is by grabbing pixels from around it and overlaying them with a slight shifting effect. Uh, and so what that does is where the scene comes together, where the 360 video is nice and stitched up, it screws with that. So suddenly you have a weird line in the back. Right. So you can't blur the whole image. Uh, so essentially what happens is when you're blurring, you have the edges, all the edges of the frame um, blur the pixels, but there's nothing to blur past the frame. So it ends up blurring blackness, which means you get lines. On, well, you get two points on the top. Yeah, you get two points on top, and at like extreme cases, you can get a line down the whole back where the right. footage pins together. Yeah. Uh, and so we solved that by only simply blurring out a mask of the front of it. Mm -hmm. So there you can you can kind of see through the blur of the cuts, but it gets to kind of accept that it's happening. But if you turn around when the graphics are blurred, you'll see Craig from uh, Dolce Dolce Nova, just completely in focus, just watching us right. all go down while it's everyone else's blurred out and the cut happens. But there's I, the, the great thing about VR is 
or VR and 360 uh, captures is it's actually really high, really easy to hide things because you can direct people's attention other ways. So yeah. when these cuts happened, one of the sort of ideas with the graphics was that we'll take you away from that. We're going to take you over here to watch a video. We're going to take you um, beyond where this cut is happening or beyond where something's not going quite right with the stitch. Um, like you'll know if you look really hard, I'm like disappearing in places, but Head gets cut off. Um, that and like, it's really easy to hide those things because you have a full way of creating a language that pushes you. So like right. one, one thing about the motion graphics that we worked for was a sense of flow, a sense of movement. So we have these lines that push in one way. We have these sort of swiggles that swiggles, uh, my favorite push thing. in different directions. And that helps draw your attention to things, helps draw your attention from uh, her to these things and keep you in that way while we just cut right there and you never got a chance to see Right. Giving away all the secrets. Huh? Yeah, so that's all, hope all and like and and that's the big thing I want to say to everyone is that this stuff is actually really easy It's it's very much just like creating video in uh, Premiere or anything like that in fact how we exported and how we did a lot of what we did for this piece was all in Premiere um, yeah. And we didn't need After Effects to do this. You could definitely make 360 video in After yeah. or in Premiere or any Final Cut, any editing software. And right. Metal just same. released stuff for Premiere, so you can start doing some of these things with 2D uh, graphics right. in Premiere without even going to After Effects now. And even uh, even without a software like Metal, which I think is about $100, $200. Yeah, it ranges for the um, studio versus. Yeah, but uh, these are this is math. This is, if you look hard enough, you can yeah. know exactly where to place it and move it. Um, right. It just makes it a lot easier and saves you a lot of time. And <laughs> That's I highly true. recommend right. using that. You can definitely do it all on your um, own. I think we should open it up to some, some questions. Some questions. Are there any? Ooh, um, I know I saw there? one question about what camera we used to shoot it on. Uh, we shot with. Uh, so we shot. Uh, we shot with two cameras, but our primary camera was uh, the John VR camera, uh, courtesy of John VR, um, and yeah. we worked with producer Lucas Wilson from Super Sphere Productions. Uh, and if you look, if you get a chance to look at the John camera, it looks like. What you think a 360 camera? Like right. it, looks it looks like, like a Death like Star. It looks like a Death Star. That was, uh, that was the running joke during production. Was that we were, we were filming with the miniature Death Star? This guy. It's, it's, yeah, this guy. It's really it's pretty intimidating. Uh, it's like there's definitely some extraterrestrial life forms that are about to <laughs> shoot out of that thing. Uh, so yeah, we used primary camera was a John VR camera, uh, and our backup camera uh, was courtesy of Total Cinema 360. Which you can. See throughout the whole yep. video if the yeah. graphics will go away. Wait for wait for that container to, to light. And it's gonna be oh. a little bit. There you go. There it is. Yeah. It's right here. This little dude. It's actually four A7S's wrapped together. Yep. It's Can really. So is that um, the one we used in the beginning? So yeah. That, so the That's opening the shot shoot. of the photo shoot is based off of Total Cinema's uh, prototype, and also the credits. Mm -hmm. The end credits. The shot of us uh, gathering around Michelle to take. You can see the, oh, the John see the photo there. Yeah, so that's a John photo, and then this footage is from Total Cinemas mm -hmm. prototype rig. Right? So here we are, so happy. Oh, muffins. Just open something else. <laughs> yeah. Um, what other questions do we have? Any other questions? questions? Uh, when falls and what pitfalls and shortcomings does 360 video need to overcome to be sustainable? It's a good question. Um, I think, yeah, I think access is a big thing. I think um, I think we're all unconvinced that watching it on a desktop is the best experience. I think I think the adoption of headsets, uh, more and more adoption of headsets will make it a much more viable thing. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, in really the future that you can't watch it in a headset if you don't have one. Because it yeah. looks and Fantastic. Get cool cardboard. It's very cheap and very easy to do. Also, um, mixing mixing in a headset, like going back and looking at it, it would help. Would help so much more. Yeah. Just a, a direct, you know, the sound effects. On right. My end, you know? And that's that's something that you ran into with sound is that right now, um, other than some proprietary players, you can't do sort of three D audio where essentially if you you can map audio so you can hear and get the sense that it's here, get the sense that's over here. But in uh, both YouTube and any other player that's kind of for the masses right now, you can't turn your head and have that turn with you. So right, right. it's off-putting. But like that's the future, right? You want to be able to look 
and see that this little effect up here is making a noise and you can follow that effect around. Right, um, yeah. Um, I didn't want to make things too stereo, so when you went 180, it was still on your, you know, the sound effect was still on your left side when you're facing the opposite way. Mm -hmm. And that would just kind of put you out of it. So I kind of wanted to make it so it pans towards the direction it's going, the animation, but once you turn your head, I pan it back to center. So it kind of feels like it's tracking your head, but it's, uh, you know, it's just a little, just kind of, but yeah. you just have That's to really actually, cool right. you just yeah. have to yeah. move your head that way. Well, audio magic. Um, <laughs> but, the, I mean, so the other thing that, uh, beyond just being able to see it that I think pitfalls for 360 video is it's very much a different medium than just video. And you have to kind of think about it like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because the future, the future for this isn't the same as film because you can't get close, right? We talk like we did that for this video because we have the ability to kind of add in graphics like that. Right. But if you want to tell a story about someone, um, you know, you're never actually going to get very close. You have the great ability of putting people in their shoes. Like, I got to see um, at one point someone did a short film of kind of putting you in the view, and I don't know anyone who did this, and it might be half lies but let's say hypothetically someone made a video where it actually puts you into the viewpoint of a doctor first and you went through this checking a patient out and then the next next time it cut you're all of a sudden the patient and getting checked out by a doctor who thought you were just unconscious but you could see and move around and look <laughs> and feel like you were not being noticed um, and that's something that i think speaks to the power of 360 video is giving you those kinds of experiences but not necessarily, um, it's not going to give you that same kind of closeness that video does. So we don't get that close up. It just reminded me of a film actually that would have been powerful in, in 360 or VR rather, is uh, Diving Bell and the Butterfly. Anyone, anyone, anyone seen this film? No. Oh, guys. Oh, no. Sorry. Julian Schnabel? Anyone? No, no? Okay, great. Thanks, guys. <laughs> There's a film, film box here. All right, good. <laughs> There's a film uh, that premiered <laughs> at Sundance. Uh, Reggie Watts was in it, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's a VR film. And in the film, you, he puts on a VR headset in, like while you're in VR. I think that's a crazy thing. Yeah. I think that works. So, really the new breaking so another, another great question, actually, in just reading right now. How much did teaching the viewer how to interact with the experience come into play? Um, it, was, it was a big deal in concepting, like um, specifically the uh, Vine Q&A section right. of the video. So there's a section of the video where we're showing off um, Michelle Obama's uh, Vine Q&A that she did. So like she would put out questions to the world, and kids, adults would ask her things, and she'd respond. And like VR gave us a great chance to make you watch one of those, and then shift your focus with this ball that we kind of have. Mm -hmm. um, and big shout out to uh, Lunar North, which was uh, the production team that we can't came in to help us design this work, and it turned out incredible. And animate it. And animate, well. yeah. And yeah. It's, it's an actual, absolutely incredible execution of what we were thinking of, and I couldn't be more proud of them. Um, so but it's the use of shapes, right? Right. Like a lot of, if you scroll through the piece, you mean it's a lot of use of circles and the dotted lines. And all these yeah, yeah, these dotted lines as well, and then squares and the containers. And the idea is use those, those circles as these guides, right? These markers to sort of bring you through the space and direct your attention to um, specific points within the space, right? And then you also use the dotted lines to accent where the direction you should be turning, right? Um, so you see a lot of that, a lot of play with, with uh, these sort of basic shapes throughout, throughout the piece. Yeah, and a lot of like the transitions that wipe across the whole screen end up on whoever is talking next. Right. Uh, which is a really nice like directional, you follow the movement. Right. Actually, I have a question for for James Barham, photographer. Um, yeah, you, sure. <laughs> can we, can we can squeeze all over? Squeeze, squeeze on in here. So James, going going back to the lead image. Yep. Uh, how how did you manage to get those those phones so close to, to Michelle's face? I mean, well, I feel I get uncomfortable. Just looking at this photograph and thinking, wow, it's, it's, yeah, it's, if it's, only, there's, yeah. A, there's a camera, you know, if only a, a Secret put, Service. Put away from Michelle. Well, 
the crazy thing about this is I drew, do you remember we had the first meeting, everything was happening so fast, got on the subway to come up to the office and drew a sketch of a load of people holding phones up to the first lady. Right. And we got here and thought, how the hell are we going to do this? Because <laughs> we had 20 minutes with her. So the first shot, this was always going to be a comp. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what we did is we actually did a test shoot, you remember? We all went downstairs, we tried to figure it out, everybody held out their phones and we did the yeah. shot. And then when we came back from the shoot, obviously we had the pictures of the first lady, we had the background, we brought the background with us. And then we went down to the studio and using a stand with a big blue balloon on it, we got everybody to stand in groups and hold their phones up. And the important thing here is, if I may stand, uh, was to get the depth around her because obviously this is 360. I mean, this isn't 360, but we wanted the piece in both terms of the design and also these pictures to have that sense. So we just worked our way through building up. There are groups of people here. We shot individuals and then just spent a lot of time comping it all together right. to make it look as real as possible. And I think. Uh, to just really convey that you know this is the first lady who's completely in touch mm. with everybody on the same devices that they're in touch with her. It's crazy. But uh, I mean, I've uh, noticed even you know some of the, the granular details of the shadows. Exactly. The arms, right. So what we had to do some is the flares. Yeah. That are striking across the screens. What's, what's really crazy about this is when you put it together, there's obviously this huge desire to make it real. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is, sometimes you've actually got to make it not too real for it to look real. So we have, you know, the hand on the left was a little too straight on, so we have to twist it a little bit and put some skewing on it to give it a sense of depth. And then the idea with the flare is to look like lights are bouncing off the screens, people are casting shadows. Right. Obviously, we had a lot of real shadows that we could, uh, we could use as references. But it's, 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 I think there was something like two or three hundred layers in this by the time we finished. And it wow. was uh, a hard time tracking down which <laughs> screen was on which phone and which belonged to which hand and which person and which side. Right. But uh, got there in the end. Um, we have another question coming in. Uh, that The question was, uh, 60 frames per second was a choice? Question mark? Which, I don't know if that was some shade thrown at 60 FPS. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> deservedly so. Um, that was a lot of thoughts. About I have a lot of thoughts. FPS. Um, a little too crispy for me. A little too crispy. Rather shoot at 24. Um, but so no, 60, that is actually a major choice we made because um, in headsets especially, um, the experience goes way up because that's able, you're able to actually feel like you're moving around a little bit more naturally than you, you would see stuttering if you're kind of turning quickly. Um, so we wanted to kind of bake this as forward as possible. So this is something that can live in the next, you know, couple months as headsets start to become more available to the public, and you know, into the future where there are years where hopefully everyone's in headsets. I don't know. I'm really into VR. I'd be happy if we're all in headsets right now. We're never going to go out time. again. Yeah, it's going to be great. We're never yeah. going to leave the house. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a choice, uh, and it was definitely a choice mostly for future. Uh, but right now. Uh, YouTube plays it. Facebook is locked at 30 frames per second. So yeah. if we can get there, we'll uh, we'll be at that probably. Yep. Any other questions? What did Michelle think about being filmed in 360? I don't know, James. What do you the, think? I think she loved it, and and I, you know, I've photographed a lot of people over the years. I know you guys have set up a lot of productions over the years, and I think we were all blown away how. I mean, this is, we're dealing with Secret Service, we're dealing with the White House, we're dealing with an incredibly short timeline. And they were just so helpful. And she was just so into it. I mean, she just, she loved it. Her team loved it. Um, you know, it's, it's a challenge because 360 shows everything. And everybody's on camera for the entire duration. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of moving past to think about. Right. Never, nobody's ever had to. And I was locked outside. I didn't even get to see it. I, was, I saw the film the same time everybody else did. <laughs> well, we showed people in the White House, like with the goggles, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, 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 they were like, yeah, set. they were yeah, super. Yeah, yeah that's and that's set. that's something that we realized is like, so many people. We're in this very like sphere, pardon the pun, of like <laughs> people who under who are up on Oculus and like understand VR is a thing that's coming out, 
but the vast majority of the world out there has never gotten to see this. Has never gotten to experience that. Right. Um, I'm sure. Like, I mean, even like, people in our office would put on the headset and be like, "Whoa, right. this is yeah. not what I expected." At which all. was really Absolutely. tough. Which was really tough to like, gauge if people liked it or if it's just like their first experience right, in the like, office. Oh, so cool. <laughs> but I'll take it. <laughs> like, it's, what, it's, it's the hardest thing with this entire project. I mean, this is obviously taking a while. We've been looking at the pictures. Mm-hmm. We've been looking. At, you guys have been looking at the video over and over. And you lose that sense of detachment from it. You're like, I can't, is this good? Is this bad? We don't know anymore. Right. And getting somebody to sit down with that headset on or to view it on a phone and see their reactions for the first time was like, wow, this is actually something pretty incredible. Right. We just got to keep keep track of that. Right. So going back to your, your lead image, so you come up with this idea of, of okay, it's paparazzi thing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the people's you know, paparazzi. Right. <laughs> These cameras all in a place. And then I noticed at if you scroll to the bottom of the post, there's a note of pho- photograph. Uh, it's, it's right there. Oh, uh, right there, there we where we see we see the reverse, right? This is yes. this is a selfie mode. Yes, and I think um, this was like a a counteract to that opening that lead picture that we also didn't want to crop everything so it's an orange background. I mean, we went, we took this roll of paper to the White House. Right. They, the White House puts the, uh, the tarpaulin down over the carpet um, and just wanted to get this shot with her team. This is her real team. And they did this picture. You can see it in the lead picture, uh, the lead uh, VR at the beginning. And the crazy thing about this shot is this is one frame. So this one deliberately, no heads have been added or moved or changed. This is just a simple bit of cleanup. Um, the first lady was standing on some tape at the bottom, which I just edited that out. But really, that's the only bit of retouching on this. Everything else is a single shot. And I think it was kind of nice to see the lights, to see the stands, to get the hint of that incredible portrait of Lincoln on the left, which unfortunately, <laughs> and rather stupidly, I managed to cut off. But, hey, huh? um, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's such a, a sort of juxtaposition to the strong backgrounds throughout the piece and obviously that opening, that opening image. So it's nice to have both. You gotta have that balance, as you know. I mean, it's it's uh, doing a photo shoot's like doing a video. There's an edit to it. You gotta have that idea right. of what the flow is gonna be on the page and how people are gonna react to the different pictures. Yeah, exactly. They were very patient. <laughs> they really seemed to enjoy it as well. It was kind of kind. Of, I mean, they these guys they were acting nicely. So right. Yeah. To well, be fair, when like you take pictures, break, it's quite you know, a show. Not <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Fantastic. I, will, I will never ever say that word. Ever again. Just, just go and watch the first five seconds of the video. Yes. James is the star. Sure, I repeat I did it, that for 20 it, minutes. And then Michelle. Like, 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Your, your, your word of choice. I had to watch it. Until I watched the video, I was going, oh my God, do I sound like that? <laughs> <laughs> I was mortified, but hey. Got the pictures, so whatever it takes. Right? <laughs> well, fantastic. I think we'll probably wrap up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, unless unless anyone has any questions for within our team, we're gonna ask. When do we start the next one, guys? Uh, that was like one of the first comments that came in, and it's, <laughs> it scared the crap yeah. out of me. <laughs> what do you mean? How hard can it be? I would like to sleep for a day or two. Yeah, yeah. there's there's a lot of there's a lot of sleeping that yeah. needs to take oh. place. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I will say this, it, it's like, definitely yeah. like, and, and I want to make it clear, like, it was a good learning experience for us, and I feel way more confident going into any VR production now. Absolutely, um, yeah. I want to see it anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, think, yeah. I think that's like something you're definitely going to see from the future for us once do we you know, yeah, Do you absolutely. know what I want to see? Do you know what's going to be the next step is when you can move that camera around? Oh, you can. Oh, oh you, you can. can. Yeah, you can carry it. Put that on a dolly. Just wait. Just wait. To be continued. <laughs> hey. uh, shout outs to Total Cinema uh, 360, Craig Gilbert, uh, Lucas Wilson of Supersphere Productions, and Jaunt VR Camera for lending your services and your technology. Uh, none of this would have Yeah, definitely been could able, not have been done. Yeah, none of this would have happened if we didn't have you guys as mm-hmm. our production partner. So big thank you. And uh, until the next one, guys. Until the next All one. Right. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Awesome. Thank you. Bye.